you want to ask her to do something that she tells you you need to do in the tree, you wrong. <laughs> They're not dumb. They're just, 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 Amen. Yeah. It's time to begin our service. Let's stand and go before the Lord and go into his presence and ask him to move once again in our midst. Father, have your way. Hallelujah. We thank you for your wonderful spirit, your wonderful presence. We thank you for this beautiful day that you have made and everything that you've accomplished and everything that you're going to accomplish in our lives by faith. Hallelujah. You'd like to page 321, page 321, higher ground.
That's my desire. Amen. Being rooted and grounded in Jesus. Amen. It's kind of interesting that uh, Pastor Woods picked that song. There's a little bit of overlap with the, the message tonight, so kind of. Amen. <laughs> Y'all may be seated. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We appreciate everybody tonight. Yes, sir. Amen. It's been a busy, busy day. Brother Mick, it's good to see you. Yes, Amen. sir. Amen. I know you've been hard at it. Hard at it. And, uh, man, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy, but we're glad to see you. And um, it's, it's, it's amazing what God did in this place this morning. Yeah. And uh, it's, the, the yeah. church is growing. Yeah, I mean, it's really growing. Yeah. 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 It's, it's really growing. It, it was amazing. And um, it's just when you sit back and watch it and uh, and see. And, and, of course, we always want to improve our night services and everything. But, we're, but, but it's good to make sure the Sundays... We're just thankful for what God, because Sundays are special. They're very special, and we're thankful that people come. And once I believe that people, you know, get get in that routine and, and, and God starts growing in their life, then I believe they'll begin to expand to, I, I, I want to go to a different service. I want to, I want to participate a little more. I want to get more involved. You know what I'm saying? But I think it's just helping people to get established. Amen. I think so. And God is really blessing. The children participated this morning. That was night nice. where we had the palm. And then for Palm Sunday. And, and they came up and they were waving, was waving the palm. We had communion. We did communion this morning. Yeah. It was incredible. It was just yeah. incredible. And uh, God just really, really blessed. It was an absolutely amazing service. And the choir is going, the praise team slash choir is going to debut their new roles. Sunday for Easter. Amen. 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 Did you get to see those yet, the robes? No, yeah, I didn't see them. Yeah, yeah. Don't show me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, the uh, a church just donated them. A church just donated them and gave them to us. And had them shipped from Michigan to here. They paid for that too. So all it's going to cost us is some pictures to send to the, to the church up in Michigan that donated them. We can do that. <laughs> yes, Amen. And I showed the people this today. Uh, this is the uh, uh, postal thing from the box that they sent them. Seventy bucks they they spent. They, yes, they, 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 I'm telling you, when God's involved in something, and uh, and I told them we was willing to pay the ship, and we, we, you know, since they were going to just donate the roll. Yeah. But it turns out that the pastor said, as a church, we just going to. Uh, he said, we'll pay for it. And um, $70.25. Yes. And uh, so yes. that's how you know. All I had to do was go on Marketplace and type in free roll, free church choir rolls. <laughs> and God did the rest. Amen. Yes, and uh, and this is the same thing happened with this. Remember mm -hmm. this? Miss Brother Steele and I went and picked this up. And uh, what's that town up in Mercy? Up in Mercy. And the church is, this is like solid, is it? Oh, yeah, that too much. Yeah, the marketplace, we got them speakers. But but we got this, of course, we had to pay for them speakers. <laughs> but that's okay. We got a good deal on that. But the preacher gave this, it's like solid oak, I think. Solid. I mean, good luck trying to move it by yourself. And uh, all we had to do was go pick it up, and we did that one Saturday, I guess. It was, but God is good. Yes, He is. And uh, God is good. And of course, you don't get everything for free. You don't get everything for free. Mm -hmm. But we're thankful for uh, when God does bless that way. But also, there's times God blesses us with things that we still have to do certain things, which is fine too. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm just excited about the church. I'm excited. Uh, we, we call ourselves trying to pay, brother Mick. You know, we had fun with that. And, uh, Wish I could have done Oh, good luck. Been a fly on the wall, right? And, but we had fun. And uh, uh, little Malachi came. And, and we went out to eat after that. And I think we're all supposed to meet this Tuesday at, uh, because the kids are out for the break. And uh, we're going to come over here Tuesday, finish the, the fellowship hall up, and get that done. I don't want to interrupt uh, one of the rounds on that. Uh -huh. There's two of them sitting there with the boxes and everything. Where? I was going to donate them to the church. Oh, my, oh my goodness. Hey, that'll work. Thank 
ask you to stand here because, man, we, I'm, I'm, up there, I'm, up there, I'm up there with you. I'm up there doing the ceiling like this yeah. with the extension. Yeah. Yeah. And then Mike over there cutting in with the, yeah. which you probably want to cut in, but, but, yeah. but that spread would be nice. Yeah. That spread yeah. would be nice. Oh Amen. So, hey, hey, we'll take you up on that. And, and God just, and, 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 and as they say, the hits just keep on coming. Amen. And, you know, the hits Thank just keep Let's give the Lord a clap on it.
trying to do everything we can. And I'm telling you, Brother Mick, this thing works because when we started doing those Bible studies at her place, Miss Angie started coming. Brother Dave started, they started coming through those Bible studies. So it works. And Brother Dave sings in the praise team. And yes, Miss, Miss Angie was here this morning. She was half asleep, but she was here. Because <laughs> normally she comes in the night service. Yeah. So for God's blessing. God and, yeah, and Miss Angie's niece. But, and, and, um, and Raphael's mom and all that. And I'm just saying, it, this stuff works. You just got to love God, and you got to pray, and you got to care about people. Yes. I ain't talking about, you know, some people do the church thing with no love attached. Yes. But I think that if you do it and you have real love in your heart, I really believe that God will honor that. Yes, sir. And not only that, people can pick up on it anyway. If you don't really care that they're right, brother, you, I've always been the kind of person I can pick up on things. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, you, ain't work, if you ain't right, I can pick up on it. Yes, and uh, so I'm just so thankful for the faithfulness of God. And I'm so thankful for the faithfulness of the people that come here. All the different jobs. We still got the wall finished. We're working on um, all this concrete work out there. All the other things, brother. Uh, brother Mick, brother Dane, brother Mike, brother yes. Steele, the sisters, everybody. Yes. Amen. Just Amen. contributing. Yes, sir. Everybody doing this. Everybody doing something to help. And it's made this a better place. Yes, it's sir. made this church a better place. And um, I've had many people drive by here. People tell me, whoever takes care of the church is beautiful. It, you know, uh, because the church is freshly painted, yeah. the yard is kept up, and it looks nice. Amen? And you can walk around the whole, whole church. <laughs> and that's a blessing. It wasn't always that way, was it, Brother Steele? It wasn't always that way. Matter of fact, before I got here, this bathroom, you used to have to go outside to go to the bathroom. Yeah, so I'm just saying, God is good, man. And uh, and uh, brother Steve and another guy did the floor. That that floor used to be the same as this carpet. And that back back, <laughs> he just, just did that. So you know, God is good, man. God is good. So anyway, God bless you. And we're gonna receive the offering later. All Christians pay tithe giving offerings. We're thankful for that. But in the meantime, as they as they say. In the meantime, um, Reverend Steele is going to come. We'll deal with the shit today. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. God bless you, brother. Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, beginning in verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen thank you, of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks, that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? 
I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring him to the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. And then just a few more scriptures in the Old Testament. The Proverbs chapter 10, verse 25. Proverbs 10, verse 25. As the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. And then over in Psalms, book of Psalms, and these are my texts, Proverbs 10, 25, and Psalm 26, and verse 12. My foot standeth in an even place. In the congregations will I bless the Lord. My foot standeth in an even place, in the congregations will I bless the Lord. And we're preaching on a, a message entitled, The Stability of God. The Stability of God. Sir, would you please stand up? Father, we thank you tonight for this service. We thank you for those that are present. We thank you for those that are watching online. I pray that you use your servant in a special way tonight. I pray, God, that men and women will know that you are stable and that you are established and that there's none like you. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and the honor in your matchless name that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 A stabilizer is something or someone that makes something else stable. It stabilizes it. Yes. And it reminds me of when we did the floor. I know you were talking about that, how that floor over there, because of the moisture, the damage, the water damage, it was unstable. So we had to go in there and we had to do, put a bit of work, right, Mick? <laughs> Cut it with circular saw, and grease it, and add some wood and do some different things, and we had to stabilize it. Had some metal, uh, uh, some sheet metal made in an old sheet metal shop I worked at. And put that in there to kind of brace it up to stabilize it because it was very unstable. And it can also be a stabilizer, a substance that prevents the breakdowns of emulsions, especially in food or in paint. And you may have heard of like in chemicals. Sometimes they have, to have certain key chemicals, something that will stabilize the chemical because it's so volatile to prevent it from uh, expanding to a degree that is not conducive. So they have to stabilize the chemical. Uh, in ships, they have certain systems that will. Uh, gyroscopically control the ship to prevent it from, from uh, tipping over. And in cameras, especially the more modern cameras uh, that are made, they have what's called in them a stabilizer, which keeps the video stable while an individual is taking a video, like maybe in a cell phone, the newer smartphones. Uh, even while somebody may be bouncing around, there's something in there called a stabilizer, which yeah. keeps it stable. And I know they didn't have that years and years ago because you watch some YouTube videos and in the comments, people are getting on people and are like, uh, oh, thanks for the great camera work because they're sideways or it's you know, bouncing around. But 
I guess with the new technology, they have these stabilizers, which will keep the video stable. And airplanes have stabilizing capabilities. An aircraft is considered stable when there is no, no rotation, motion, or uh, tendency. So the aircraft is stable if it returns to its initial equilibrium. Yes. And, you know, depending upon the flight conditions. And an example of that, where the plane could be unstable is during turbulence. You ever been on a plane and you experience turbulence? It seems like the aircraft is, is unstable. But thank God they have stabilizers which will help to keep that plane in the sky. Yeah. I'm not saying it's always, a, you know, uh, making it statement like it's a blanket statement, but thank God for them. Cars have what's known as stabilizing bars. And they're a U-shaped steel bar connected to each of uh, in, in the front, the front wheels, these U-shaped bars. And they have a, a uh, dampening function and they provide structural support. They're part of the car suspension and that's what keeps a car a lot of times from tipping over when you're going around a turn. It shifts the weight to one side of the car. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're trying to go around a turn going 80, good luck. That may not work. But the way that the clocks are designed, these stabilizing bars are anti-sway bars, which will keep the car from swaying and flipping over on you and killing you or killing people in your car. So. Thank God for that. And speaking of stability, I when I was thinking about this message uh, weeks ago as the Lord laid it upon my heart, I thought about the world. I thought about the how uh, unstable the world is. And it's true, not trying to be uh, a negative or pessimistic, but uh, we see that there's a lot of uh, instability in our country and in the world, internationally. We hear about the instability overseas with uh, Russia and Ukraine, yes. and about uh, uh, China, all the, uh, with uh, uh, Taiwan and their uh, league, so to speak, China and Russia, and uh, 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 Iran attacking some of our, uh, uh, our, our troops over uh, in Syria, just last week or the week before, and North Korea testing uh, 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 missiles and uh, the, the different types of uh, uh, technology that they're getting their hands on, which is a concern to the United States. Yes. And then we hear about the banks collapsing, the financial systems not being stable. Some 200 uh, banks have collapsed, I guess, over the last month or so. And, and all these different things in the political realm, all the fightings and, and these uh, uh, different uh, 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 mass shootings that we've heard of, uh, just one last week where uh, some children and I believe some adults were killed in Nashville, Tennessee. So we see that there's instability on all hands, on every side. But I'm here to tell you tonight that though it may seem like the world is unstable and our I'm glad that we have a God that will stabilize our lives. Amen. Amen. God is a stabilizer. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I read to you out of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, about this uh, prodigal son. Jesus here, talking about, he was trying to uh, illustrate, and yes, uh, it, uh, as some say, he was talking to the lost house uh, uh, of Israel, the lost sheep of Israel, and that may be true, but it also is applicable to us uh, in our personal lives. Uh, this story, this man that had these uh, uh, two sons, and the Bible goes on to say uh, that the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods uh, uh, that fall to me. And he divided unto them his living. And then he goes on to say how that uh, the son after uh, the younger boy, after his father gave him uh, what was coming to him, uh, uh, and he divided unto him uh, his inheritance, uh, so to speak, uh, that he went out uh, and he wasted all the substance uh, with riotous living. But you see, before that ever happened, uh, I like to think that uh, he had a very, very uh, a stable life. Uh, it was a stable household, and we know that from the account of what I read to you. Yeah. Things were pretty good. Uh, it seemed like uh, life was pretty good. Uh, Jesus didn't go into any great detail, but we can kind of read between the lines. Uh, because the Bible says that after uh, he got uh, his uh, substance that was divided unto him, 
No doubt, while all that was going on, I'd like to think maybe, and he probably did, just human nature, I would, if I had it pretty good, and I was living pretty good, and my daddy treated me pretty well, and then I go, and I make a mess of my life, and I, I get in an unstable situation, no doubt his mind probably went back, oh, yeah. and he thought about, wow, I had it pretty good at one time yeah. in my life, now look at me, yeah. it's a family, and I'm like a pauper, and he had to join himself to a citizen of, of that country, the Bible says. And the Bible says that the man, his employer, sent him into, uh, into the fields to feed swine. And, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. And no man gave to himself. But I like what the Bible says. And I believe the Holy Ghost put this in here. He said, but when he came to himself, he began to think about it. One day, maybe, while he was there working in the pig pen, so to speak, it dawned on him. He said, you know what? As I mentioned, and I don't mean to be redundant, what am I doing here in this unstable situation? I had it so good. He said, and he began to think right. His thinking began to change. And, and, and he began to change his viewpoint. Yes, yes. He said, how many hired servants? Of my father's have bread enough and to spare. And I'm sorry. I perish with hunger. He said, I know what I'll do. I will arise. Here in verse 18, and go to my father and will say, I am Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And the Bible says that he arose and he came to his father. And I like this part. He said, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. No doubt the father was thinking about him. He saw him a great way off. He was looking for him. If only my son would make me was thinking perhaps. If only my son would come to his senses. I would take care of him. He should know nothing in the first place. He was thinking about his boy, and he saw him a great way up, and no doubt there was joy in his heart when his son came back to the father. And I'm here to tell you tonight, I don't know your spiritual situation. I don't know if there's instability in your life. I do know that if you don't know Jesus, your life is, is unstable. Even though it may seem good on the outside, and maybe you got a good job, and things seem to be going good. There's all types of instability. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is. Yes, sir. We're unstable creatures. Without the stability of God. Yes, sir. Without Jesus. We need Jesus Amen. in our life. He brings that stability to our lives. He's the one. He's the only one that can do it. Yes, God. Jesus. Yes, God is our rock. Jesus, he's that one. Yes, God. I heard a man say one time, he said, if you ever find yourself between a rock and a hard place, turn to the rock. I'm so <laughs> glad that one day I turned to that rock. Jesus, he's the one that brings that stability to our, uh, to our life. He's the one, like the song says, that puts us up on that higher ground, who causes us to be rooted and grounded in that love. He's the one. He's the only one that can do it. I tried to do it in my own life, my own personal testimony for years. And I was a young man, but my life was unstable. But I'm glad that one day somebody told me about Jesus and that seed was planted in my heart. And God gave me that stability that I couldn't find out in the world. And it'll do the same thing for you. Yes. If you'll come to him Preach in sincerity yes. and by faith. Yes. Preach it, bro. Yes. A personal relationship with Jesus brings stability. I was talking to some individuals the other day, and nobody that goes to church but these gentlemen, and, and they claim to be Christians, and they go to some church, and the one man made a comment. He said, 
he said, uh, uh, he said, he said something like, I don't understand how it just seems like in the country or in the society, uh, mental health is on a, is on a decline. And, and him and this other fellow were talking, I was listening a little bit, uh, and, uh, and, and they, got, they got to saying what they were saying, and, and, and uh, I, I got to thinking about it, and I said, uh, wait a second, and then uh, I chimed in, I said, uh, the reason why, I'll tell you why, is because uh, people don't know Jesus, and in reality, I'm not making light of, of, of mental health, it's a real thing, people suffer from uh, mental health conditions, uh, and, and all these different things, and they looked at me like it was some strange doctrine, Jesus. I said, Jesus is the yes. answer, yes, yes sir, yes sir, I couldn't believe it, yes. I thought, wow, you don't see that, Jesus is the answer, they were talking about counseling and all these different things. And that's all good and fun. I'm not taking away from that. And I even commented on that. Yes, I'm not downing uh, 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 medications and all these things. I, I'm not. They, they have their place. And, Jesus. and psychologists and psychiatrists, they go to school for years and they study behavioral patterns and, 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 and mental health ailments and all these different things. And whatever good they do, that's great. But even go to them if you don't know Jesus. Your life is unstable. Yeah. Jesus is the only one. Men, men, men can do uh, men and women can only do so much for you. But I'm glad that God, He goes a lot deeper. He gets to the very root of the problem. He's the one that can do that. He's the one that does that work. He's the one that brings that stability to our lives. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And as we sat there, the man. Started really thinking about what I was saying, and he had to admit to me. He said, You know what? I think I'm really thinking about what you're saying. And I believe that's right. That's the right thing. It is. And, 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 and I was thinking, you know, I don't see how you could really think otherwise. Jesus. How, how, it's, how it wouldn't be. Jesus is the answer. Is the answer. He is the answer. That song, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, yes, there is no other. Jesus, Jesus is the way. Yes. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, yes. may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and, yes. and the height. And then he said in verse 19, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. He's the one that does it. Being rooted in Him and grounded in Him. I don't know what you're rooted in tonight, but if it's anything other than Jesus, that rock, that brings stability. He's the one. He's the answer. Yes, sir. God gives us the tools. He gives us all the tools we need. We can't do it in ourselves. The Bible talks about it in the book of Ephesians. He said, yes, Jesus. Chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his mind. Yes, he said, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand. And I like that. I got to thinking about that, how God gives us what we need uh, to fight that spiritual battle. Yes, uh, he gives us the right, the, the right tools for the job. Uh, Brother Mick knows about it. You ever work on a job and you need a certain tool when you're trying to use some other tool that's not meant for that purpose? Uh, maybe a screwdriver as a pry bar. And sometimes it'll work on something like that. But when you got to really get some leverage and have that fulcrum, it doesn't cut the muscle. Or you're trying to use something like maybe cut steel banding and get to some building materials and you don't have snips so to use a, maybe a hammer and it's hard to do or a shovel. That's a trick. A lot of people, I've seen a guy do it one time. But you got to have the right tool for the job. I'm so glad that God, he equips the Christian 
with the right tools, with the right equipment. He said, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. Yes. Stand therefore, having your loins gird about with truth. Yes. I'm so thankful for the truth. Yes. Amen. Yes, sir. What's truth? Jesus is the truth. I'm glad for that belt of truth. Yeah. And, and and it all starts off with truth. Every other every other part of the armor is attached to it. If we don't start with truth, then we're laying up for the enemy. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. We have to start with Jesus. Yes. Amen. He said, Our loins gird about the truth. Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Back in the ancient days, uh, the, the men they would wear those robes, uh, and, and but uh, those robes that would cover like the groin area and the lower back. Uh, but the robes sometimes would get in the way, so they have to kind of roll it up and wrap it up. Uh, that's what he meant by the Lord be your loins, uh, gird about with truth. Uh, uh, Jesus is truth, uh, and the devil's a liar. Jesus said he's a liar, speaking to the devil and the Father of all lies. Uh, when he's speaking to lie, he's speaking of his own. He was a murderer from the beginning. And he did what? He abode not in the truth. I'm so glad for the truth. I'm so glad for, for that stabilizing truth that, that only comes from knowing Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank God for the truth. Oh. Jesus said, Thy word is truth. Gospel of John, chapter 17. He said, And having on the breastplate of righteousness, not self-righteousness. We're not righteous in ourselves. The Bible says our righteousness is what? As filthy rags. We, we, can't have, we can't earn enough merit to have a right standing with God. What is righteousness? Being right with God. Who, what makes us right with God? Knowing Jesus. Righteousness of God. By faith. What he did on the cross. His righteousness. Not our righteousness. But God's righteousness, Jesus' righteousness, yes. our sinless substitute, he took our place on the cross. The Bible says, he hath made it to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that what? We might be made the righteousness of God in him. That breastplate of righteousness, it covers that chest. It's got to protect that heart. And of course, we're talking about the, the spiritual heart, not the blood part. <laughs> but for... But to illustrate the point, what he was talking about here, the writer, the Apostle Paul, having on the breastplate of righteousness, he said, here, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that readiness, the gospel fitted with that readiness, that peace, that only comes from knowing God. Amen? Yes, Jesus. The gospel. Jesus brings peace. Yes. He's the only one that can bring that inner peace. Knowing him. Jesus said, my peace give I unto you. Not as the world give. Give I unto you. And what does that mean in the Greek? That wholeness. That oneness with God. That peace. That peace of God. Being, being whole. Being made one with him. How do we do that? Again, how, how, does, how does that stability happen? From knowing Jesus, that personal relationship with him. Yes, Jesus. Our feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the gospel, the good news that Jesus is alive, that Jesus died on the cross and rose again from the dead for our justification. We believe that. We've accepted that by faith. That gospel of peace, above all, Taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. What are the fiery darts of the wicked? All the lies of the enemy. That shield of faith, he mentioned it this morning. Faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We trust God. The psalmist said, some trust in chariots, some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord. We will trust in him. Some trust that some countries, they trust in their tanks. And their armies and all these different things. And that's all good and fine. They serve a purpose. But if we're not trusting in God, 
And we're on some pretty unstable ground. Amen? I can't control the things around me. I can't. I can't. I, I, I can't. I, none of us can. But if we have God, we can be stable. We can have that peace, that inner peace from knowing Him. He's the stabilizer. And we can quench all the lies of the enemy. That shield of faith protects you from that. The devil's a liar, as we mentioned. I don't want to be too redundant. The devil tries to put thoughts in your mind. That's the battleground is in the mind. And we'll get to that. He said to take the helmet of salvation. Amen? Protects that mind. Salvation that only comes from God. All these are tied together. What is salvation? Being saved. Knowing Jesus in a reality. That work that he does. The born again experience. We surrender to him. By faith we surrender our heart, our lives, our whole being to him. And he saves us. He brings that salvation. And it comes from knowing him. But he said take the helmet of salvation. And we can be kept in our mind. But we have to have that spiritual helmet of salvation. That helmet protects that, uh, would protect that night, right? From different things that would strike him in the head. When we have that helmet of salvation, the Bible says that he will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee, because he trusted in thee. Yes. Right? He'll keep, the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. And I mentioned that to those men. That, that 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 day that I was talking about, they're sitting there and I'm telling Jesus is the answer. Yes. And without that, without the grace of God, and without God stabilizing us, we lose every time. We're no match for the enemy in ourselves. That's right. But the Bible says, "Greater is He that's in us than He that's in the world." Yes. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, that sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. We need the Word of God. Yes, the psalmist said, Thy word have I hidden my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Thank God for the word of God. His word is truth, as we mentioned. Amen. 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 What do you say, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? But take heed to thy word, O God. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, You are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. I believe the word of God. I may not believe a lot of things. And the conspiracies on it. But one thing for sure, I believe the word of God because it works. And I'm bored of it. And it changed my life. Yeah. And we have to nourish ourselves with that daily, with His word. Amen? Yeah. Hide it in our hearts. So that when we do hear something that's not true, we know. We know. And it's so true. When you've given yourself to the word of God and you've read the word of God, when you hear something that's not true, you know. No, no, that's not what the Bible says. My friend, no, that's not true. And not that we use it as a, uh, a to, to uh, uh, debate and stuff. And that's not what I'm saying. We use it to, to grow in God and to fight the onslaught yes. of the enemy. Yes, God gives us the tools we need. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We need to pray. We have to have a relationship with God, being in constant contact with Him, being on speaking terms, talking to God. Yes. As has been shared, we talk to Him in prayer, and He speaks to us through His Word. Amen? Amen. Yes, sir. And He can use different avenues through people. I'm not saying that. But in, in a general sense, it's true. But we have to walk with Him. And I've shared this before, the great man, great uh, uh, evangelist, Smith Wigglesworth. Somebody asked him one time, they said, uh, Reverend uh, Wigglesworth, uh, do you spend a half hour a day in prayer? He said, no, but there's not a half hour that goes by that I'm not praying. Not praying. Amen. Yes, Acknowledging sir. God. Yes, sir. Amen. In our lives. I'm thankful for that the uh, stable gospel. What is the gospel? The good news of Jesus Christ. The apostle said in the book of Romans, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is what? The power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth. Jesus said, I will build my church. 
and the gates of hell shall not prevail against that. He didn't say may, may not. That, that's confidence. Jesus, when Jesus says something, it's always with confidence. It's, 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 it's not, well, I think it'll work. I think I'll build my church. He said, I will build my church. Right. Yes, sir. And he'll do that with or without us. Amen. Remember the ark when it was taken by the Philistines in the Old Testament? God, 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 was take, God was cleaning house, taking care of business without any man. They tried to put the ark in, in, uh, in, in the house of their, their uh, false god, Dagon. And when they came in in the morning, I think he was bowed down before him. And his hands and his head were taken off of their fake, phony god. And then they put him, they put him in uh, uh, somebody else's house. I, I can't remember. I can't remember who it was. One of the houses of the Philistines. And God spoke their house. And God, God wants to use us. But what I'm saying is, God's going God's to accomplish his will. And his word will not return unto him void. Amen. He's going to build his church. Amen. And I like this. Over in the book of Galatians, speaking of the gospel, this really speaks to my heart. The apostle Paul here, talking to the church at Galatia, he said in Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, I marvel in, in, in this church at Galatia. They, these Christians, there were people in the church that were Judaizers. They were trying to bring the brethren back into Judaism, bring them back under the law. And the Apostle Paul was pleading with them throughout this book, if you read. He says here in chapter 1, verse 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ into another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Trying to destabilize the church is what they were doing. He said, which is, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you who would prefer the gospel of Christ. But though we, but though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that he have received, let him be accursed. He was saying that, you know the gospel that we preached unto you and what God did in your life and how that you changed when you heard the word of God and you believed. He said, even if we came back and we became messed up in our minds and tried to come back and preach a different gospel than what you heard at the beginning, that you knew was a reality in God, the truth, you just keep on believing that good news, which you heard. Though we were an angel from heaven, Come back. You just keep believing that gospel, that truth, that changed your lives. The gospel works. The gospel changes lives. The good news that Jesus Christ is alive and that Jesus will save. I'm thankful for the gospel. His will is saving. God's will. Amen? The instability comes when we get out of his will. What did the apostle say in Romans chapter 12? He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He said, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds, that ye may prove what is that perfect and good and acceptable will of God. That's your reasonable service. That's the least you can do. And that's really, when we come to God, salvation, it's a surrender to Him, to His will, to His way. We were doing things our way, doing things according to our will, but we surrender our lives and our, our hearts to Him in sincerity and by faith. And then, and then, we start to follow His will. And I'm getting really close. And I've shared this illustration before. 
I read this this story about about these uh, mariners on the ocean. They would sail in these ships, and they said that whenever there was a hurricane, they said, and you know they were experiencing. They were in the troubled waters and winds, and they would try to get out of the hurricane. That's when they. That's when it would wreak the most havoc upon the ships, cause the ships to sink and lose their lives. He said, but we soon realized after having experienced the hurricanes that if we stay right in the center of the hurricane, it's calm. The eye of the hurricane directly in the center because all the all the uh, uh, fierce winds are on the outside but right in the center the eye of the hurricane is where it's calm and there's peace and one man said it's the same thing with the will of God when we try to go out of God's will and do things our own way that's when our life becomes unsafe right the foundations are unsafe because we're doing things our own way we don't have that stability of God. But when we say, stay in His will, whatever His will is for, 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 our, for our lives. And, and His will, I will tell you this, is God only has one will for your life, and that's to know Jesus in a reality. And in whatever He has for your life, everything, it's almost like a, a, a subtitle. God's, God's will for your life to be saved, to know Jesus in reality, to give your heart to Him, to live for Him, and in whatever way He leads your life. Or being in His will, staying in His will, directly in His will, that's where the stability is. And that's where the peace is. God bless you tonight. I hope you find that stability in God. If you don't know Him in reality, if you're listening online, you can know Him. All you have to do is say, God, make yourself real to me. Jesus, come into my heart by faith. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and you shed your blood and you died for me on the cross and he rose again from the dead for my justification. Come into my heart in a reality. I open up my heart to you. I want the stability that he's talking about tonight in my life. And if you do that and you're sincere with God and you mean business, he'll mean business with you and he will change your life. I promise you.